Number 50, a pendulum is made from a 7.5 kilogram mass attached to a rope connected to the ceiling of a gymnasium. The mass is pushed to the side until it's in a position, position A, where it's 1.5 meters higher than its equilibrium position. Okay, so A is a meter and a half higher than the equilibrium position. And after it's released from its rest position A, the pendulum moves freely back and forth between positions A and B as shown in the diagram below. So it swings down to here and then over to here and it keeps swinging back and forth. What is the total amount of kinetic energy that the mass has as it swings freely through its equilibrium position? So what's the total amount of kinetic energy that it has right here? That's what we want to know. So let's just talk a little bit about kinetic and potential energy. So at this equilibrium position it has its maximum kinetic energy because it's if you consider this bottom point the equilibrium equilibrium position to be the reference height so it's zero you know zero units of height at this point then all of the potential energy available to it has been converted into kinetic energy so that's where it's going to have the maximum velocity at point a initially it was stationary so it has no kinetic energy it has only potential energy potential energy due to its height. The fact that it's a meter and a half above the equilibrium position means that that potential energy due to its height can be converted into kinetic. And then that kinetic energy at the equilibrium position is then converted into potential. So at every point between the equilibrium position and points A and B, it has a mix of potential and kinetic. kinetic. But at A, it has only potential. And at the equilibrium position, it has only kinetic. So hopefully that kind of gets you caught up on potential and kinetic energy. So they want to know the kinetic energy at the equilibrium position. The formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Now the problem with this is you know the mass, right? We've been given the seven and a half kilogram mass. But we don't know the velocity. We know the velocity is the maximum velocity that it'll see, but we don't actually know explicitly what it is. We may be able to calculate it but we can't solve directly for the kinetic energy this way, so we need another game plan. What we do know is that however much potential energy the mass had at position A is how much kinetic energy it now has at the equilibrium position because it's all been converted. It has no potential at this point. It has only kinetic. So we can say potential energy at A is equal to the kinetic energy kinetic energy at the equilibrium position and what is the potential energy at a well the potential energy is given not by this formula but by another formula mgh notice it takes into account the height cuz the, the fact that it's above the reference height is why it has potential energy and now we know the mass we know the acceleration due to gravity and we know the height so we can actually plug it in we can get the potential energy at a and that must be the kinetic energy at the equilibrium position. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We have mass of 7.5 kilograms times g, 9.81 meters per second squared, and height is 1.5 meters. Let's see what our units are going to be. We're going to have kilogram meters per second squared, which is newtons, and then that's being multiplied times meters, so that's newton meters. And what is a newton meter? A newton meter is a joule. And joule is the units of work or energy. That's what we want, kinetic energy, potential energy. So we expected our units to be in joules. Let's find out what exactly that number is, and we'll be all set. So we have 7.5 times 9.81 times 1.5. That is 110. So, kinetic energy equals 110 joules. Best answer is 3.